There is a lot of assault rifles in Warframe, a dime a dozen some would say, but few of them actually have the complete package, like the Kuva Karak. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a couple of builds laid out, something cheap-ish, something affordable that most players can build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a ribbon, and of course we also have the Hunter Mumu variation as well, which is also on the cheap side, with one exception. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Karak. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of free shots. Now the Kuva Karak, and the Karak in general, is what I like to call the spitting image of a solid assault rifle. Take a look at this, full automatic, beautiful isn't it, and pinpoint accuracy for the most part, and that was what my friends. Uh, 17 meters till the target, absolutely freaking fantastic. So if you're the kind of guy that prefers classic weapons, you don't want your spacey futuristic laser beams and all whatnot, then this is the way to go. Look at that. The recoil? Almost non-existent. This is the Baza level of recoil. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Full automatic, pinpoint accuracy, fast reload, what more? Do you want in terms of usability there is absolutely nothing wrong with this weapon now let's jump into a stat comparison between the kuva karak and the normal version of the karak actually that would be entirely pointless because it will just murder it but we're gonna be comparing to the karak rave now take a look at that accuracy 80 versus 28.6 and i've seen some of the comments blazar accuracy doesn't matter in warframe well that's not true what about heavy caliber for example okay what about actually hitting your target to deal damage no, nothing. Anyway, accuracy is a whole lot greater, and yes, the Kuva Karak is 100% viable for heavy caliber. Critical chance got a massive boost as well, 10% extra, 23% instead of 13%, and a small buff on the critical multiplier, 2.1 instead of 2.0. Same fire rate of 11.67, slightly higher magazine, well, larger magazine, 70 instead of 60, same noise alarming, and the 0.2 meters worth of punch through. I see this is a trend on all Kuva weapons, all of them need to have a little bit of punch through, and that 0.2 will help you with the Grenier Shield dudes, and that's about it. Faster reload as well, that is what, 15% faster reload, 1.7 instead of 2.0, and larger status chance, 31% instead of 25%. Now when it comes to the damage, keep in mind that what you see here is the base version of the Kuva Karak compared to the Karak Wraith. The actual damage will be higher if you get a decent roll on your Kuva Karak. Your rolls can be between 25% and 60%, and if you factor in 60% bonus elemental damage on your weapon, the Kuva Karak will be out damaging the Karak Wraith. So, bear that one in mind. Now enough about that, let's jump into the stats of the weapon. Keep in mind that these Kuva weapons can reach the mod capacity 80 out of 80, just like the Parasesis, because these weapons can go to level 40. To get them to go at the level 40, unfortunately, you're gonna have to form them five times. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't really need 5 format to build a weapon, even the quote-unquote ideal build for it. But if you want every last drop of mastery points, you will have to format this one 5 times. And of course, you're gonna be jumping into actions and installing the Auro King Catalyst, which will be doubling your mod capacity. Therefore, you go to 80 out of 80. Now, the Kuva Karak also comes with one polarity, one V symbol, so bear that one in mind. Now, let's jump into a standard build. And we got damage with serration, multi-shot with split chamber, vigilante armaments, critical chance, critical damage, combo between point strike, vital sense, and of course one elemental combo between malignant force and stormbringer. Now one thing that I did forget, my roll is a 50% electricity, okay? So the base damage, total base damage of my Kuva Karak is similar to the Karak Wraith. If you're going 52-55%, you will get extra damage. Now heavy caliber is here because again, it is 100% viable on the Kuva Karak, and I'll show you exactly how the accuracy works out but of course this is entirely optional and up to you here's another good idea which i will showcase in just a minute shred and or prime shred as for your xless mod slot 
Guys, you don't even need to unlock this one, honestly. It's not necessary on this weapon unless you go for crazy amount of fire rates, but more on that, just a tad later. So of course this will be a corrosive setup and we're gonna be shooting Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. And let's see what the weapon can do with non-expensive mods. I mean, none of these should be all that expensive. We got, how many did I spawn in? Six, why did I spawn in four? No, it's four. Anyway, this should be more than enough to highlight the power of the weapon. As you can see, it can absolutely tear through them like there's no tomorrow no problem whatsoever now if you want even more dps if you're the dps guy then you can go for shred definitely shred will help you out a truck ton when it comes to a build such as this so let's quickly change the shred shred is cheap again it's not very expensive prime shred is another kettle of fish but again not everybody has prime mod so in this case we're gonna be going with shred i'm not gonna be dropping heavy caliber though what i'm gonna be dropping is vigilante armament since between heavy cal and vigilante armaments heavy cal actually provides a gra greater benefit oh and by the way that accuracy 18 meters till the target like 80 percent of those bullets if not more are within the crosser so there is no real problem in uh, using heavy caliber with this weapon thanks to that increased base accuracy and like this of course I'm gonna be able to kill these targets just a little bit faster but I am burning through ammunition which is why vigilante supplies comes into play but of course you can also use something like ammo pads of course additional punch rule will mean more DPS in the right circumstance Here's the thing with punch through. It doesn't always provide you with a great benefit because if you're shooting a single target or there's nothing behind it or something that doesn't align to your angle at which you're shooting, then your punch through is basically worthless. But I thought this would be a good option to showcase as well. I do love shred. It does work in the right setup, especially when you're blasting a million bullets. So there's that. Now, of course, you guys probably noticed the weapon wants to slash. Let's talk about the IPS on this puppy. You got 58, 50, 78 in this uh, configuration right now. Now, if I was to remove all the mods, you'll see that Slash is the highest by a small margin. That means that I'm going to be able to build this weapon into a full-blown Slasher. And not only that, what I can also do is leverage the fact that it has a decent critical chance on it and slap on Hunter Munitions as well. Of course, 30% chance to apply Slash on critical hit. You guys know this one is one of the most overpowered mods in Warframe. I'm still waiting for the nerf on this one. I've been waiting for over a year, but there you go. Now, we're going to be getting slashes from two sources, one from Hunter Munitions and the second from the weapon's innate slash value. And we went for two 60-60 mods forming the Viral Elemental Combos from Rhyme Rounds and Malignant Force. Now, on this build, there is one expensive mod, Argon Scope. I slapped on Argon Scope as my option because I want more slashes out of Hunter Munitions, therefore I need a higher critical chance. I only got 57.5 with Point Strike alone. If you don't have Argon Scope, if it's too expensive, if you don't want to buy it, etc, etc, you can go for even more multi-shot or you can go, once again, for heavy caliber. That will work fantastic. And the difference between the builds isn't gonna be all that huge. So bear that one in mind. Now is this a Hunter Mumu build? It's not even a Hunter Mumu build. It's a full-blown Slash build because basically you get Slashes from two sources. Now, of course, the test for any slash build will be to hit a target till about 50%, then watch the slashes deal the damage. And as you can see, that is absolutely freaking fantastic. And if you guys want to talk about the value of a single bullet on a target, of course, a slash build is going to be a whole lot more powerful. Here's the thing about slash builds. They're really, really good in mostly any circumstances, okay? Unlike corrosive builds. Corrosive builds are going to be fantastic against heavily armored targets. But if you don't got heavily armored targets, well, if you don't got heavily armored targets, mostly everything falls anyway to pieces. So, there's that. I'm not a fan of slash builds, but when it comes to the Kuva Karak and its optimal build, from my point of view, this is the way to go. Again, I'm not a fan of slash builds. Never have been, probably never will be, but this is simply better. And better is better. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Now, of course, there's still one more thing which I want to showcase to you guys. A Riven setup. When it comes to Rivens on these Kuva weapons, keep in mind that all of them have Riven Disposition 3 out of 5 as of now. As of right now. So even though the Karak Wraith has a higher Riven Disposition of, I think it's 5 out of 5 or something like that. Let's test actually Karak. I don't know what's the Riven Dispo on this one. I did a review for it like a long time ago. Yeah, 4 out of 5. Take a look at that. Take a look at the values, okay? So, 4 out of 5. If I go to my Kuva Karak, 
you will see that Riven Disposition drops down to 3 out of 5. This is a new thing in Warframe. D is introducing it basically to all weapons. We don't know exactly when they will do it, but basically you're looking at individual Riven Disposition per each and every single weapon. So your Bratton Prime will have a different disposition to your MK1 Bratton. So bear that one in mind. As for a Riven... Now this one is a loner from a viewer, thank you so much friend, we got multi shot and critical chance and as you can see 3 out of 5 is still definitely worth using. From my humble point of view only 1 out of 5 is not worth using and 2 out of 5 is a little bit iffy so there you go. Of course this will be a corrosive setup because I love my corrosive setups and we got more critical chance, more multi shot and this will be a whole lot more powerful. And of course the corrupted heavy goons level 120. No warframe buffs, just the weapon with all its might. And as you can see, I'm able to tear through these targets a lot better than before. And of course, you can go for a Hunter Mumu build when it comes to something like this. But these Riven setups that I keep showcasing you guys, these are the builds I use when it comes to real-world testing. Like running from mission to mission, mission arbitrations, uh, Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, that kind of thing. And as you can see, this weapon can absolutely shred. And it's not just about power when it comes to the Kuva Karak. It's about usability, it's about being comfortable with the weapon. There is nothing wrong I can say about this weapon. Not a single goddamn thing. But let's hop on over to Lady Mirage Prime and a little bit of Warframe buffs because why the hell not? Against Grenier, the optimal aura of course is Corrosive Projection, but by all means my friends, if you feel like using your Rejuvenation, your Shield Disruption, Loot Detector, Growing Power, whatever it is, use your favorite aura, because to be honest, most auras don't really make a huge impact, like Rifle Lamp or Pistol Lamp. Corrosive Projection does, however, so bear that one in mind. When it comes to Arcanes, we can definitely go for Double Arcane Avengers, because these do double stack link the cards right now for a full tutorial on Arcanes. Now, the beauty of Arcane Avenger, and I'm gonna keep hammering this one in, it's a bonus additive after. It stacks on top of what you already have, so it doesn't care about the base critical chance of the weapon. It applies to primaries, to secondaries, and to melee weapons as well. It's one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, offensive arcane in Warframe. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best arcane, period, it's just one of the most powerful offensive ones. But I'm gonna split this one, we're gonna go with Rage. Now this one is flat damage, 120% damage to primary weapons on headshot, 10% chance. Both of these can be farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. From the trade chat, you can buy them as well. If you're not into Eidolon hunts, I totally get it, not everybody enjoys Eidolon hunts, so there you go. We're gonna be spawning in the Corrupted Heavy Goons level 100, well, 145. With Mirage's buffs, I mean, they can go up to whatever level they want. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but there you go. I'm gonna be using Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as her ever so lovely clones. And of course the weapon was doing fantastically well before, but now my friends, with the power of Mirage behind the Kuva Karak, you get to see a magic trick of now you see him, now you don't. Now my friends, it's time for some very difficult conclusions, simply because there's nothing wrong with this weapon, it does basically nothing wrong. Now I know what you're gonna say, dude there are plenty of assault rifles in Warframe, give me a break, there's like the Tenora and the Prisma Gorgon which is also my favorite, there's the Soma Prime etc etc. And you would be correct but not all of these assault rifles are what I like to call the complete package, basically this has it all, solid damage, usability, I mean when it comes to usability it's got solid accuracy, heavy caliber viable, super quick reload, super solid magazine, super solid fire rate, what more do you want? And it also has a little bit of a build diversity, so if you don't like slash builds you can go elemental setup or vice versa. This one basically has it all, so it's the kind of weapon that everybody should own, so go out there and try to get yourself a Kuva Karak. Now nowadays you can trade these weapons, if you guys are interested in something like what would be the ideal role on the Kuva Karak, I would still emphasize the use of Toxin. So again, go with Saturn Prime as a progenitor, electricity is not bad, and neither is heat. So, bear that one in mind. Now, I praise this weapon a whole lot simply because it deserves to be praised. It can basically do whatever in Warframe, and it's never annoying. It's all, it always has that beautiful usability and handling behind it. But there's one problem with the Kuva Karak, and it's a bit subjective, I know, but this one is plain Jane. It may be an epic plain Jane, but it's still a plain Jane. In a game where I'm building my spaceship to go fly off some weird sentient creature race thing, I'm using what is essentially an AK-47? I'm sorry, Counter-Strike is two doors down to the left. Now, don't misunderstand, there's a very good reason for that. The Karak was designed and implemented a really, really long time ago. And back then, Warframe played more like a standard shooter rather than anything else. It evolved into the space 
artistic madness that it is today over time thanks to the feedback of the community and the flexibility of the developer. And of course, my friends, there is a flip side to my coin. If you love standard weapons, okay, if the standard assault rifle affair is definitely for you, then you're going to be loving your time with the Kuva Karak. And that's pretty much gonna do it from me. As always, my name has been Laser. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest a particular weapon review or versus. And in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you that it'll be done by next time or even within a week because these things take a little while to make. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.